What's happening guys? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're talking about audio ducking and it's a great feature here in DaVinci Resolve. I use it all the time and I thought that you guys might find it helpful too. I did make a video about this about a year and a half ago, but we've had a lot of new people come to the channel since then and I don't know if anybody goes back and watches the old videos. So I figured I would just put it out there again and uh, maybe there's some new things we can learn here as we go through it. But hey, if you're new here, my name is Jay Yulofsky and on this channel we talk a lot about DaVinci Resolve. We even cover a little bit of camera stuff, some microphone stuff, some gear stuff. Everybody loves some gear stuff, right? So if you're into any of those, consider subscribing to my channel. All right, let's roll that intro and get into the video. So you might be thinking, what is audio ducking? I never heard of that. I don't even know what it is. So audio ducking is basically when you have a music track playing in the background below, say, me talking, for example. And you want that music track to get a little quieter while I'm talking, and when I'm done talking, you want that volume to come back up. Well, we can get DaVinci Resolve to do that automatically for us. You don't have to keyframe and do all kinds of stuff. So let's get right into DaVinci Resolve and start learning how to duck our audio. All right, so we're in DaVinci Resolve here. I'm in the edit page, and I've already got one clip of me walking and talking on my timeline, and I also have a music track below that. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you've got your audio level set and everything is sounding pretty good. A quick way you can do that and the way I do it with music tracks sometimes, since they're already edited and remastered and all that kind of stuff, I just come to them, I right click and I come to normalize audio levels. And then I'm going to come to true peak and I'm going to set that somewhere down around seven or eight. I'm just going to hit normalize and then it's going to correct our audio for us there. I also want to make sure my audio track of me talking is at a good level and sounds good. So I'm just gonna have my mixer open here in the edit page. If you don't see your mixer, come up to the top. It should be this little icon right here. Click that and that's gonna open the mixer for you. I'm gonna start by muting my music track just so I can double check my talking track and make sure that sounds good. So here's our talking track and I'm gonna watch my meters and make sure that falls somewhere in the minus 10 dB range. All right, here's our sample clip of how audio ducking works. When I'm talking, that music should be ducked down below at a lower volume than my voice. When I stop talking, we should hear that volume of the music come back up. And if I start talking again, that volume of the music should come back below my voice. Okay, so there's our clip. It does look like the levels are a little high, so I'm just gonna open my inspector here. I'm gonna drop it back just a little bit. And we're just gonna go with that for now. I'm gonna turn my music track back on. So now we wanna get into audio ducking. So if I just drop in a music track here and we play through that, you can see how that sounds and it's not gonna sound good. So let's play through with the music track below and see how that sounds real quick. All right, here's our sample clip of how audio ducking works. When I'm talking, that music should be ducked down below at a lower volume. Okay, so I'm not gonna play through the whole clip, but you get the idea. The music is loud. Now I can lower the entire music track and have it play quieter below me, and that's fine, you can do that. But let's say there's different parts where you're talking and you're not, and you want the music volume to go up when you're not talking. So we can automate that here in DaVinci Resolve. So if we come over to the Fairlight tab, and in here we've got our two tracks. We've got me talking on the first track here, and we have our music on the second track. We can make these a little bigger by coming to this icon just so we can see the waveforms a little bit. So in order to tell DaVinci Resolve how to duck the audio, we need to take the signal from my talking track and send it down to here. So DaVinci Resolve knows when to lower the volume of the music track. So how do we do that? The first thing we need to do is come and open our dynamics. So if you have your mixer open here, and if you don't see your mixer, come, again, come up to the top. You should see mixer right here. Just go ahead and click on that, and that's going to open the mixer for you. Now under audio track one, if you scroll down, you can see I can't see the dynamics one. I know it's this one. If you're having trouble seeing it, you can either make your window a little bigger if possible, or come to these three little dots right here, and you can turn some things on and off, so hopefully you can see the dynamics. So let's just say I'm gonna turn off my EQ for now. And there's my dynamics. So just double click on your dynamics, and this brings up the dynamics for our audio track one. And we can be sure of that by looking at the top, audio one. So in order to have DaVinci Resolve send this signal to the side chain to use on another track, you wanna come down to the compressor section and click on this send button. Now, normally I would have some settings set here in the compressor, maybe the gate and expander, but in this example, it doesn't matter. You don't need all that turned on. You just have to have this send button turned on. The next thing we wanna do is open the dynamics for our music track. So you can do that really easy by leaving your dynamics window open here and just selecting the next track. And if we look at the top of our dynamics window here, it says audio two. So that's how we know we're on our audio two track. Now I wanna come down to listen in this same section under the compressor. I'm gonna turn that on. 
So now we know that DaVinci Resolve is going to be listening to the signal from the audio track one. So now that we have the listen turned on, the next thing we need to do in our audio track two here is turn on the compressor because the compressor is going to tell DaVinci Resolve at what point should I start to lower the volume and how much. So if we look at our threshold here, that's going to be at what point do we start to lower the volume of our music track. So down here at the bottom of the threshold, we have our decibel level. So we know that our speaking track is somewhere up here around minus 10. Well, we want the music track to be quite a bit below that. So I'm going to come down, say, around 20. Let's start there and see how that does. Now, the ratio tells it how much do I lower the volume. Do I lower it 2 to 1 once it goes over top of the threshold? Well, in this example, let's just lower it down quite a bit, and we'll just try it right here for now. So now if we scoot this window over a little, we come to the beginning of our track. Now we're going to play through and see how it sounds. All right, here's our sample clip of how audio ducking works when I'm talking. So you can see that the gain reduction was working there and it was lowering the volume, but it sounded awful choppy. Let's just listen to another second or two of it. You can hear that and listen for that. And then I'm going to show you how we can fix that. All right, here's our sample clip of how audio ducking works. When I'm talking, that music should be ducked down below at a lower. So if you're trying this and it seems like it's not working out for you, try playing with the threshold more. Maybe you need to bring it up a little bit more. Maybe you need to bring it down a little more. It all depends. So if I brought this way down, and played through it again. Now listen to what it does. All right, here's our sample clip of how audio ducking works when I'm talking. So you can see once that music volume hits this level, which is about 30 decibels, it quickly cuts that volume way down. So depending on where you put this threshold will affect how much it drops the volume of your music track. So I'm going to bring mine back to around 20 there. Now let's talk about how do we make it sound a little bit smoother because it sounded awful choppy. Well, that's where these three buttons down at the bottom come into play. So the attack is how quickly does that compressor kick in when it gets a signal from our audio channel one, which is me talking. So how fast does the compressor start to reduce the volume of our music track once I start talking? Most of the time you can leave this where it is. You can try playing with it and seeing if it makes a difference for your clip. Most of the time I just leave the attack where it is. And if you adjust it, you can just double click it to get it back to its default setting. So the next item we have here is hold. So how does hold work? Well, let's think about how this whole thing is working here. So we have our music track. It's playing through here. And then as soon as I start to talk, the attack button over here says, okay, within 1.4 milliseconds, activate the compressor. Once the compressor is activated, it will remain active until I stop talking or until there's a break between my words or my sentences or whatever. So the hold says, how long do I keep that active after you stop talking? So for me, most of the time, I find that if I bring this up to around 1600, anywhere from one to two seconds, really, uh, is where I usually set it. But somewhere around 1600, 1500, which is about a second and a half, after I stop talking, then it will go back to its normal volume. So I'm going to lower my threshold just so it's a little more clear on how this is working here. So let's come back, crank that up, so that way we can really notice the difference. So let's see. play through here. Now listen to the music volume. And then once I stop talking, listen to how quickly it goes back to its normal volume. That volume of the music can come back up. So if we boost this hold up to about 1600 here and play through again, now listen to how long it takes for it to go back to its normal volume. Volume of the music come back up. So you can see it was a long time here. It was one and a half seconds about for the music to go back to its normal level. So in this case, I think that's too long. I want to bring that back down to, let's try, um, let's go a little less than a second here, maybe three quarters of a second. So now let's play through and you can hear how that sounds. Of the music, come back up. So you notice it comes up a lot quicker there. So you just play with the settings and see what works best for you. But you're definitely gonna have to adjust the hold here so that way it doesn't just cut straight back really quick to the normal volume because that's gonna sound a little weird. So the next item we have here is release. So what does release do? Release says, how long will it take for the music to go from our volume while I'm talking back to its normal volume? It's going to happen really quick, or is it going to gradually fade into its normal volume again? So this one I usually also bring up around, say, a second and a half or so, because I like the music to ease back into its normal volume. So let's play through this uh, clip here and see how that sounds. That volume of the music, come back up. And so you could see there, it really eased into it. Now, if we just drop the hold down, so that let's say as soon as I'm done talking, it's just gonna ease right back into its normal volume. Let's see how that sounds. You should hear that volume of the music come back up. And if I start talking again. 
So you can see it just kind of eased right back in. So I think that sounded pretty good. So you just have to play with these two options here and just see what works best for your clips and the way you're speaking or how quickly you want your music to return back to a normal level. But I use this all the time for all my talking head stuff. Anytime I've got music underneath it, it works really good. And it's a lot faster and easier, in my opinion, than going through and keyframing your music track and raising and lower them volume at different points in the video. I just think it's way easier to let DaVinci Resolve do the hard work and do the heavy lifting for you. All right, so now that we've got it all set up, let's play through the clip one more time so you can hear the whole thing in its entirety with the audio ducking. All right, here's our sample clip of how audio ducking works. When I'm talking, that music should be ducked down below at a lower volume than my voice. When I stop talking, we should hear that volume of the music come back up. And if I start talking again, that volume of the music should come back below my voice. All right, guys, there you go. Audio ducking here in DaVinci Resolve. It's an awesome feature. I use it all the time on pretty much every video. And if you're doing talking and music and you want to duck your audio below, you should be using it too. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. If you like videos like this and you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell so you get notified when I put out a new video. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.